Hi, I'm Kirby, um, and I have two college commentators with me. Why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Alec A47, repping uh, Sonic Community, which Kirby and I are both part of. Shout out to the Sonic Originals run. Be sure to catch, if you missed it, be sure to catch the VOD. Awesome, awesome folks. Absolutely. I'm Quo. Uh, I have a Zelda hoodie on. I guess that's cool. <laughs> we also speed run Pokemon Snap and, yeah, you know, uh, Minish among Cap. other things, Minish Cap, Yeah, right? I, which I used to run too, 100%, yeah, 100%, like 10 years ago. Anyways, um, so I'm not going to start the run quite yet. I'm going to explain the bit war at the end of this run. Um, so we have a bit war to sacrifice the future or Robin. So I can literally show this off on stream right now. I'm going to load up a bookmark save of the end game of my Lunatic Plus playthrough from last year to show this off. This is totally not an excuse for me to show off my playthrough. <laughs> um, so after you kill Grima, the last boss, you have a choice to have Krom finish up Grima or not. If Krom finishes Grima, uh, Robin survives, but Grima will return to threaten the universe in future generations. But if you have Robin defeat Grima, Robin will sacrifice her life to permanently kill Grima. So we can show this off in real action, and hopefully this works. This is totally, totally part of the speedrun. Don't worry about it. Shoutouts to Morgan and Lucina. The yep. Yep. Amateur. Amateur. Good job, Lucina. Whoa, Lucian's going in. She's going in. Holy moly. All right, cool. All right, so that's, that's the run. GG. Next <laughs> run, I'm, I'm joking. Um, so, so after we kill Grima, we have the choice coming up right here. Um, this is the bid war will be for the actual run, but I guess... It, but um, we're going to let Krom finish this blow right here and keep Robin alive, and Grima will return in a future generation, future generation being in about one minute. So we're about to kill Grima again in less than an hour. So that is what you're going to be donating for if we have to kill Grima again after this run or not. We'll rather sacrifice Robin or sacrifice the future. So without further ado, um, we have a naming incentive for Robin coming up. Um, and that may or may not affect your choice on which sacrifice you want yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't like Tingle, you might feel slightly less inclined to keep Robin alive. But if you really like Tingle, you might want to sacrifice the future to save Tingle's life, assuming Tingle won a bit war. Or if you dislike Tingle but no others do as well. You mm -hmm. know, um, <laughs> that's, that's a thing too. I'm a Tingle fan personally. <laughs> I'm not, but hey, oh. all, all the respect. I'm not uh, either. <laughs> damn. All right, so who won the bid war? What's the name? Uh, the name is as expected with over double the donations of the next runner-up. It definitely is Tingle. <laughs> All right. I think we like this face. This kind of matches Tingle because he kind of has a little blush, I think. Yeah. We can give him that face. Give her, this, in this case, her. Um, green. This is the closest green hair I can find, I think. So we'll just stick with that. Um, I think it was kind of short, so we can go with this. So that works. All right. So is it just uh, Tingle with a capital T? That is correct. Awesome. Oh, well... I guess. I, I don't like Tingle, but that's okay. <laughs> Put some respect on his name. Just, just enough. <laughs> well, I, I could, I could give it like... I don't wanna. I, I, could, I could give like a question mark right here Tingle? if I wanted to. Tingle question mark? Or maybe some musical notes. Denote know, some happiness. Do, do, do you th I think all the Tingle donators wouldn't mind having some musical notes. Do you think? Yeah, yeah you know, well, we'll stick with they it. They probably we'll stick wouldn't. With it. They, wouldn't <laughs> they wouldn't mind. Let's go with it. All right. So this is actually relevant because uh, our avatar, Robin avatar... Um, this is where the run will start soon, but we need to explain the acid and flaw. So Robin we are, is going to go magical, and we're going to give her a defense flaw, which is weird because we kind of don't want her to die. But the reason for that is that the general junk stats we want to throw in as our flaw is typically skill or luck, but those flaws actually hurt her magic growth, offensive growth rates a little bit. And we need every bit of offensive magic we can get. And so the only beings that don't do that are HP and defense, and defense is the lesser evil of the two. So, without further ado, I guess we'll finally dive in the run um, instead of going into way too many technical details. So, do we have a countdown ready? Would you like me to do it? Or? Yeah, let's do it. All right, yeah. Lord, man. Everybody in the audience ready as well? Let's start this countdown in three, two, one, go! All right. Let's go, Tingle. Music note, music note. Music note, music note. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of a tutorial chapter. We just go through the tutorials, change some options to go fast. 
This is totally not a dream. Um, and this, we have the auto battle feature in this game, which basically makes the AI play the game for you, which is really fast. You're going to see a lot of it, but don't worry. Not, that's not going to be an entire run. Uh, there's a chance we can get a two turn here. It's a 28% chance we missed it, unfortunately. So we're at five seconds. Oh, no. That's OK. Yeah. Now we get into the first real map of the run. So Robin's the avatar that we just customized, and she's going to be the main carry of the run. So I'm not going to explain too much about her. But we do have two other important units that start, join us immediately. They're, they are Krom and Frederick. Krom is the main lord, um, and Frederick is what we call the Jagan. Now, without going into too much detail, but they're important because um, there's a parrot mechanic where when Robin's paired with Krom, Krom gives him a lot of speed, very important early on. Later in the game, we're going to use Frederick a lot as our pair-up bot, which gives Robin a lot of defense and, most importantly, plus one move. Um, they're not going to be used much for actual combat, Frederick a little bit, but we'll see that in action later. But we're just going to spam auto, spam the crap out of auto battle and hope we get good level ups. All right. And here's our first level up. Nice. Fantastic. 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 All right. So the, the stats we're really looking for are magic, obviously. We want every stat, of course, but um, that's fine. Uh, speed early on is also very important because well, Robin's base stats are actually pretty bad, and her growth rates are all, well, not, not that fantastic either. This is a fantastic Robin. Yes. But what makes her so good in this game is not her base stats, which is her starting stats, and not her growth rates, which is her the ability. chance of getting <laughs> stat ups. Yeah, it is her ability. Um, she has an ability called Veteran. What does Veteran do? Well. If your growth bases suck and your growth rates suck, well, not suck, just get more levels. Because mm -hmm. Veteran gives you plus 50% experience if you're paired up. So we're going to keep Robin paired up for the majority of this run and just get like five level ups in this chapter alone. So that's funny. All right. See, like, look, look at the screen bar. That's half a level right there. <laughs> and level up. Hey. Eh. It's OK. We do need strength, but not immediately. Yeah, the build here is magical, but you don't get really into the magic until later in the game, because your first class, of course, is able to cast magic, so you're going to use a lot of magic. But um, second class is actually a physical class. This is looking good. This is looking good, yeah. All they heard, oh, the, t the Tingle. Tingle's pretty OP. Maybe I disrespect him a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we need to disrespect Tingle more. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Show us in your donations for the bid war at the very end of the run. All right, so I'm going to give start. So this game has a support system where when you engage in enough rounds of combat with units, uh, you can increase their support. Krom is going to have, this game also has a marriage system, and we're going to have, spoiler alert, we're going to marry Krom to Robin. Um, but Krom will automatically marry whoever he has the highest support level with by the end of chapter 10, I think. Um, so we, it's a number. It's a number, yeah. There's, there's more details to it. I'm not going to get into all the details because this run is way too fast. All right. Whee. All right, uh, Robin, don't miss. Congratulations, you didn't miss. Yeah, and Robin's using a magic tome. Magic is very powerful. Hooray! Hooray. <laughs> wow. Magic is very powerful because, one, enemies tend to have lower resistance than defense. Ow! <laughs> Ow. 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 Um... And also, uh, magic tomes have one to two range, meaning they can attack at one range. They can also attack at two range, which is very powerful. We this is kind of sketchy. Our defense is terrible. I think we've gained one defense level. Uh, all right, let's go uh -oh. camp a bit, because this is basically Pokemon Kaizo, where we need to conserve our resources. So I'm going to burn a few turns and just heal, because our vulnerabilities are extremely limited. I, I mean, you I could heal here. Listen, yeah. I forgot I have a real healer. <laughs> wow, thank you. Well, this is kind of useful. All right. And hope we don't die. Hope, hope we dodge. All right. Uh, take this a little safe. Not engaged the boss yet. We got hit there, unfortunately. Oh, hooray. Hooray. De hooray. Defense, let's go. OK. Uh, that's a little scary. Let's not do that. Let's heal up and hope we don't miss. All right, cool. So we have a glass cannon Robin, not Robin, Tingle. Very, very, very glass cannon. 14 magic is fantastic. So we are going to get one more level up before chapter 5. In chapter 5, we, need to, we ideally want 15 magic, which requires 8 out of 10 magic levels. Her magic growth is about 60%, by the way, so the chances of that are around 20% overall. Not fantastic. 14 magic works, but we have to use a less accurate weapon. 13 or 12 magic sucks because we have to rely on a random dual strike. Can you explain dual striking? Yeah. Um, so when units are paired up, um, you get these stat buffs that Kirby talked about earlier, uh, but you also get two... Um, 
I guess, other passive buffs. Um, so there's Dual Strike and Dual Guard. Uh, there's a percent chance that uh, for Dual Strike, your co-unit is also going to attack. So you have, you know, Robin attack with magic, and then in most cases, Krom is going to attack with his sword, and then Robin attacks the second time if they double, obviously. Um, and then sort of same thing with Dual Guard, but instead of attacking, uh, it blocks all the incoming damage. They did change it a bit in Faiths, but uh, we won't go too, too far into that. Um, I'm pretty sure in this game it's just a percent chance. It's a percent chance based off of some of your stats. Yeah. I won't get into too much and detail. Support but yeah. and stuff like that. Yep. Um, mm. But we did mention marrying Krom, which will give us an S support in a couple of chapters, and that's just going to make it uh, more likely whenever uh, we do pair up with Krom. Mm -hmm. uh, do we die? We don't die. Oh, 100% chance. Let's go. Easy. Hey, easy. <laughs> don't, see, HP, the last HP is the only HP that matters, right? <laughs> uh <-huh>. Right? <laughs> All right, so this is the first like big run killer coming up here, uh, which our Marvin's fantastic offensively. Um, I'm going to buy some safety tonics. Sonics are basically temporary stat boosters, which only last for one map. Um, whoops, wrong menu. Did not mean to buy uh... that. <laughs> I'm going to sell that before it messes up some of my menus. Bye-bye. So, uh, so we bought a few one strength tonic for our map later on and five defense tonics. Uh, we, in a world record, you would skip all this because it's very slow. Um, but it is very easy for Robin to die in this chapter because this chapter is uh, very dangerous. And uh, defense tonic, Krom, four, 13, ma 15 magic is fantastic. We can unequip Krom. So Krom can dual strike and help us bypass some benchmarks, but we don't want to do dual strike if we can help it because it gives an experience. Why do we don't, don't we want experience? Because level ups cost time on anyone not named Robin. Okay, so the big boss run killer coming up here. Is Lucina. Who? 16 magic. Oh my god. <laughs> that's uh, every level so far, I think. Minus that, that's one. That's nine out of uh, 11, I think. Not 10 out of 11? I'm not sure. Off the top of my head. All right, Lucina fight. This is. She, we're going to comfortably two round KO, two a KO her. Wait, it says Marth, though. Oh, the Marth, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're about to bonk Marth. So if we have one less magic, we do 14 times two damage. We have one more magic than the benchmark, so we comfortably one round KO Marth. That person won't come back. Don't worry about them. <laughs> um, not getting hit there is actually pretty huge because mm -hmm. uh, Marth himself is a difficult fight to actually get past and kill one shot, but uh, everything else after that still does a lot of damage. It's very important to one-round KO Marth, otherwise if Marth, Marth will either run away and heal, yes. or you have to use a player phase to finish off Marth, which is very dangerous because you're probably almost dead. And but, they can't heal. And yeah, so that went really smoothly. All right. So yeah, those stats that you see there, like... The strength matters uh, for parts of the yeah. run. That's physical damage. Magic is magical attack. That's the main thing that we care about here, along with speed, which Tingle has been getting a lot of as well. Um, and that allows you to double. So if you exceed your opponent's speed by enough, in this game, I believe it's five? Five, yes. Yes, uh, it varies, of course, uh, across the series. Um, then you're able to attack twice, whether uh, you are on the offense or the defense. It also helps you dodge more, which is good because there are a lot of times later in the game where the strat is just dodge here. Wow. Rick and fans. <laughs> Any Rick and fans? He's about to get a kill here. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go, Rick and. All right, all right. R Rickon got the most kills out of every mage in the, in the speed run. Therefore, he's the best mage in the game. Congratulations, Rick. Yep. Now you just run away. Oh, we are low on health. And then, of course, we want some defenses. And the best stat in the game, of course, is luck, because <laughs> it affects everything it a little bit. <laughs> it's most important for dodging crits. Her speed is not keeping up as well. 12, 12 is the minimum benchmark, which I learned on stream for this map, but she still has enough to get by. Oh, yeah, so we're actually using Frederick as a combat unit, and we will in next chapter, too. So he's a, what we people call a Jagan. Um, and he's a really good one. So Jagan's typically have, um, what's it called? Uh, they're inter typically already in a tier two class with remote, yep. typically bad growth rates, which is lower, worse level ups typically. Um, but Frederick has really good growth rates in this game. I've literally done a lunatic playthrough with a Frederick solo, and it is the most degen and easiest way, brain dead way to beat the game, because Frederick is so good. <laughs> Anna? Anna, oh, Anna. oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, I'll buy that, honestly. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that increases skill, so more hits, more crits. If you get another Anna with a second seal, you don't have enough money, though. <laughs> I will sell stuff. I think I have a medium bully on. Uh, All right. So this map is kind of a pseudo-defend chapter, and one weakness of Robin that I mentioned 
I haven't mentioned yet. There's only one of her. <laughs> That's a really big weakness. So Frederick's going to be helping out a lot. Quite a bit, because we uh, it is a game over condition for Marth's sister to die here. Uh, don't worry about her in like three maps. And we're going to auto battle and have Frederick like, block this choke, help out this Marth person here. Um, don't worry about the portrait. Totally not, a, totally not a different person. But yeah, this is a route chapter. We haven't explained actual objectives, but the majority of objectives in the early game are route, which means uh, we have to kill every last one of them. No references or whatever, whatsoever. Um, but this is still like a pseudo defend chapter, so we just need to make sure no one can reach Emrin, who is Mart's sister. Frederick and this uh, wolf girl named Pan just joined us. Pan and Frederick are going to help clear out some of the areas near She's Marth. a funny girl, excuse me. Okay, bunny girl. Why am I thinking wolf? Well, make sure you don't mess with a bunny. Don't, don't mess with a bunny, okay? Big bunny, by the way. Very big bunny. Very cute bunny. Bunnies are pretty awesome. Did you know one of my favorite Sonic characters, the speed one, is Cream? Cream's pretty cool, and she's a bunny. Anyways. Okay, so after this chapter, we have Anna. Anna. So um, as of two, I think, chapters ago, three chapters ago, um, we actually saw Anna earlier. There's a chance that a secret seller shows up on the map, which is a little green unit. Um, and that secret, secret seller will come with three items, uh, which are random. And there's, um, it's sort of like three slots. The short version is there's about a 33-ish percent chance. I Empirically, I tested roughly 25%. 25, to get oh, a second worse seal. than I thought. Uh, that we get a second seal. So we saw a master seal earlier. Hopefully we get a second seal, which is a blue item. That lets the last us, chance. This is the last chance. That lets us change our class. No nope. way so, right. so this run will be not legit, unfortunately, but that is how it goes. But before that, um, three magic tonics? Three magic tonics. And I'll sell bullion. So right. it doesn't mess with my menus later. So just because of uh, you know outside factor, it is random, which kills a lot of runs. Um, but we're actually going to be able to get a second seal a different way. I did, should do that. You <laughs> yeah, yes, it would be a good idea. I should probably actually do that. All right, hooray! Uh, uh, no, no one look. No one look. There is no cheats going on whatsoever. Don't don't worry about it. Look All right, now you can look. Now you can look. Um, and for the second seal, this is actually why we're using a female robin because we're going to be um, changing into a class that is exclusive to female units. Um, which is the Pegasus Knight. Yeah, so flying class is good. If you've seen Spider-Man speedruns, you know it's just mobile class, good. Unfortunately, that we can't, Pegasus Knights cannot use tomes, so we have to use lances, and Robin is at E-rank lances. This is where the strength stats matters, by the way. We need a minimum of 14 strength for the strats to work out, but we are well comfortably above that. Um, I'll keep you, undeselect you. So... That one, there's two huge downsides to Pegasus Knight right now. The downs one downside is that we're stuck with lances. We have, if you look at the bottom screen, we have E rank lances. Bronze lances are only one range. Javelins are two range, but D rank. So we cannot have range attacks for, until like basically the end of this map. Other downside, uh, we do not like archers. We are very, very allergic to archers. Uh, they probably do like 15-ish damage to Robin right now. Um, thankfully, Maribel will here to save the day and bait an archer away from Robin. Good job, Maribel. She has a very low defense stats. Yeah. <laughs> like, a, awakening AI and like uh, the DS games, Fates, Onward, uh, Echoes, the AI really likes prioritizing more damage. So even though archers have a like, triple might against Robin, they still prefer attacking Maribel, which is very good. And there's another archer down. Yeah, so like, to show, we, this guy has 18 attack, we, so, and we have 16 defense, so they do two damage. But the steel bow might is tripled, so he does 18 more damage. So that's about 20 damage to Robin. And we have 36 HP, so uh, we don't want to get hit by that and other stuff, but the only strat reliable strat is to dodge Lamau. So just dodge Lamau. Which is why we want speed and luck, because we want more dodge, more avoid. Okay, so the, the archer's not going to attack us right now because he got blocked off by a random barbarian. Good level. Um, which is good and bad. Good for survivability. Bad because um, we really want to kill this archer on this turn, but we want to kill this archer while in range of this boss. But we can't get in his range, so we're just going to have to buy the turn loss. Nothing we can do about it. Meanwhile, you saw the best girl show up in the lower left. Hi, Cordelia. Uh, <laughs> she's a good example of the good character writing in this game, uh, where she <laughs> actually has a growth arc. Ooh, it looks... I'll chuck an elixir. Okay, uh, and this should be good. So we have to end the map on this turn. Otherwise, reinforcements will spawn. Um, but we should be good. <gasps> we go. should be fine. Our, we haven't really gotten any magic after reclassing. Which is not great, but that, that, that just means average is catching up to us, and average is okay. Okay. Chapter 8. Uh, this is going to be an. So now we can use javelins, which is really nice, because now we can counterattack 2 range. And this is going to be another chill uh, route chapter. Um, 
I have one thing to say before we can squ squeeze in like two or three donations. Um, so we're going to visit a village that gets us a master seal. And a master seal allows us to promote into a tier two class, which we will do. Um, safety save. Oh, yeah. Um, Cordelia fans rejoice. She's going to get one kill right here. Good job. Uh, she's going to kill this guy, by the way. And we'll javelin our way to victory. And feel free to throw in a free donations while we watch Robin kill everything behind a lovely black screen. Alrighty, I'll take that time as I can. As a friendly reminder, team, we do still have that upgrade to all stages incentive for Super Mario Bros. The lost levels at current, that's at $37,897 of $50,000. We are just within that $12,000 mark. And at the same time, we are just a little under $21,000 away from reaching 1.5 million. We can do those both at the same time. When you go to the gamesdonequick.com website and select donation, donate in the top, the bottom of that page there, make sure you select incentives and select Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. We have to have that done before the start of the Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels run. So you have just over an hour worth of runs left before we get there. We can make it happen, but we have to work together. And with a little help there, we have $5 donation here from Orange Freeze that says, Hi there, everyone. In case you needed more convincing of your power, there are 60,000 people watching the stream right now. <laughs> if each of us donated $5, we would raise $300,000 for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. More than enough to get all those Super Mario stages. Every dollar counts. Let's get that $5 hype train started. Thank Woo. you so much for that. Let's make it happen, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, you can see there uh, Kirby promoted Tingle into mm -hmm. the Dark Flyer <laughs> class, which can again use magic as a flyer. So that's uh, excellent. I don't remember what, what I buy here for safety. Okay, uh, two, four, five. Okay. Oh, yeah, Anna's. Ooh. Uh, speed wing is kind of. Wait, I thought that was another we Anna. We don't need more speed. I, I <laughs> don't need more speed. There's an Anna. We don't need that. We don't need more speed. We're fine on speed. Okay, so this is kind of a scarier map. Um, so there's two units we can recruit on this map. One of them is going to stay as a green, uncontrollable green unit um, and kill like three enemies for us, hopefully. Um, there's totally no sec other second unit in this map. Don't worry about it. But there is a unit that will drop an Elf Under Tome. Yes, there is a unit that will drop an Elf Under Tome for us, which is fantastic because we don't have many tomes. Also, Cordelia fans rejoice. She's going to kill this guy. That, that is her second kill in a run. All right, so yeah, so we promote it, and Dark Flyer class can use magic. That's fantastic. Then now everything just dies. And we just Juggernaut Robin more and more and more. That is a fantastic level up. We want more magic. We want more avoid because our strat is literally dodge tanking. Because uh, that hurts. Yeah. That kind of hurts. By the way, crits do triple damage. Uh, so that's 66 damage. It's a very low chance of a one-hit kill, which... We have a graph that kind of helps illustrate. Yeah, is. so this game runs off of what we call a 2RN system, where the game actually lies to you about hit rates. Uh, and so you can see a little lovely graph here, where basically, if, if, if the game sh says a hit, uh, hit rate is about, uh, what's it called? 40%, oh. you'd expect the game to roll a random number between 0 to 90. And then, if it's lower than 40, you hit. But in this game, it takes two numbers and takes their average. So if in order to miss a 90%, for example, you need to roll two numbers where the average is higher than 90, which is a 98.1% chance. Don't ask why I have that memorized. So you can, but to visualize it, you can kind of see a red graph here on this graph that basically visualizes how the hit rates actually are. In other words, if a hit rate is less than 50, then it, the actual hit rate is lower than what the game tells you. And if the hit rate is above 50, then the hit rate is higher than what the game tells you. For example, 60 hit is 68.1, I think, in this game. Uh, an 80 hit is about 92.2, I think. Don't, again, don't ask why I have that memorized. All right. So, uh, spoiler alert, sister just died. Uh, not so classic Fire Emblem tradition, because it's usually a Fire Emblem dad, but... Okay, R Krom sister died, not Kringles. Magic. She didn't even really die. Yeah. Hooray! Hooray! You know, this hooray thing was completely unplanned, but I'm okay with it, and like, I, I would like to hear loud hoorays for any levels to get at least five stats. This is Awakening, so there will be a fair number there, of them. There will be a fair yes. number of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one other thing to note is that we promoted Robin at a very specific level. Um, 
because there is a specific point where we, Robin just learned rally movement, which is perfect timing. We want to pass that rally movement down to Lucina, but we also want Robin to hit, be as close to level 15 as possible before, what's it called? Uh, hitting, learning level 15 skill, but still be close to it. Yeah, we want it timed just after the skill is passed on. Um, to her child with Krom. Mm -hmm. And uh, the skill that you get after that is Gale Force, which we'll explain when it's relevant. Yeah, for now uh, we have Rally Movement, which, you know, it's a pretty good skill. It, it gives plus one unit move to units nearby, but Robin, you, unfortunately, you can't use it on yourself, which kind of sucks. So we kind of want another unit who can use it on us. It's going to hurt casual fans seeing Rally Movement to be passed on. Yeah, I know. Gale Force, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. All right. So while we watch Robin slaughter everything, I'd like to give a quick shout out to um, Cat1803 and Mecha. Uh, who, so I'll be honest, I did not like this game on my first playthrough, probably because I expected it to be like the Telly's games. Oh, hi, boss. Bye, boss. Um, and then I only played it once on hard mode, and I put it away. And then like after like well, they released, they made like a YouTube hooray <laughs> tearless video on Awakening. I'm like, oh, all of this sounds pretty cool. Let's try giving it another playthrough. Um, and this was about a year and a half ago. And ever since then, I've done seven lunatic playthroughs. I learned the speedrun for this. Um, seven lunatic playthroughs, learned the speedrun for this, beat the world record, and did one lunatic plus playthrough, which is the file I just showed off at the start. Told, I, I totally, I'm not addicted to this game. Don't, don't worry about it. It is actually a good game. <laughs> Hooray. Hooray! See? Everyone agrees, and everyone in the crowd agrees. All right. So this is the point in the game where Krom, wife is chosen, and spoil alert, oh, I wonder who's going to be, actually. Well, Any bets? Any bets? Olivia? Oh, maybe Olivia. You can do Krom Olivia. It's very, you got a very funny inning out of it. They even joke about the whirlwind romance because they just met. <laughs> 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 All right, who's it going to be? Oh, oh, who's the mom? Who's the mom? Who's Lucina's mom? Hey, it's Tingle! <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there's baby Lucina. All right, bye. We've got to run to finish. We've got to kill Grima in less than 50 minutes. Because Grima, this is the generation where Grima has returned after my Lunatic Plus playthrough. All right, so we are about to get another unit in this map named Shursh. Uh, she, her speed is absolutely terrible. She is probably one of my... I don't mind her, but her speed is so bad. But she can hammer stuff. And yeah, she starts with a hammer. Uh, she is a wyvern rider. Hello. And, uh, yeah, just... Congrats on killing these two guys. Uh, she's going to get four kills in a run, so she's going to have the third most kills in a run right after Robin and Frederick. So if you go by kill count in the speedrun, sure, she's the third best unit in the game. Can I quickly scoot in here to let you all know we're only 11,000 away from getting that upgrade to all stages, and we're less than $18,000 away from reaching 1.5 million. Let's keep it going. We can make this happen before the end of this run. I Woo! believe in you all. Woo! Oh, so less, so less than 17,000 now. It's going. Ooh, her magic is really falling behind. Yeah, it's fine. we will be fine. But yeah, he's he squeezing another, like, two donations because Robin just kills everything. I'm proud of her. Let's I'm make it happen. Her. $10 here from Dew that says, Cat Spam, Nuck Stare, Nuck Glare, Nuck Pop, Nuck D, <laughs> Nuck Hug. Good luck on the run, Kirby. We're all cheering for you. Also got $100 here from Ace Trainer Blue that says, I cannot overstate how impressed I am with the scheduling, tech, and management teams. This is one of the Ray. smoothest GDQs I have had the pleasure to watch. Excited for the Fire Emblem run and proud to donate. Thank you so much for that. We got time for one more? Uh, one like quick one, one yes. Yeah. One, one quick, quick one. one. $250 from Ian Strachan that says, had to donate for the Fire Emblem run. Thanks, GDQ, for another amazing event. All right, so I'm going to make a quick detour to buy a rescue staff for Endgame, which, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> just, just ignore that. Oh, 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 what the, oh, do you see the bottom map? That's a lot yes. of... That's like an Anna party. Oh, my God. Uh, unfortunately, no stat boosters. Boo. They, they didn't deliver. They did not deliver. Uh, yeah, don't, don't mind this quick shopping trip. This is totally not for something in Endgame. All right. So, chapter 13, this is the last chapter before Lucina joins. So, by the, so at the start of this map, Robin needs to be at level 14 with less than 49 experience. She's typically going to be at 41 or 28 experience, which is fine. So I'm just going to double check that. 41 experience, correct. And we are actually going to have Robin do stuff unpaired, because again, we do not want Robin to hit level 15 by the end of this map. Otherwise, that will kill the run, because we do not want Lucina to inherit the horrible, terrible level 15 skill, because it is a terrible skill for Lucina in the speed run. <laughs> 
So Lob's going to be very close to a level up. I think I heard someone scream and page <laughs> at the audience there. Slight heart attack. <laughs> All right. So we are almost at level 15, but we are not. Uh, hi, Lucina. She just, she just time traveled from the future to try to save our timeline. I'm going to not save in case something went wrong. I didn't hit 15, but I should be fine. All right, so Lucina just joined us. She is the daughter of Krom and, in this game, Robin. Tingle. Yeah, so she always inherits Aether from Krom, but she will, oh my god, uh, nothing. Um, she will always inherit the last skill from her mother, which in this case is Robin. Um, and in, Robin, in this case, it, her Robin's last skill is Rally Movement. So, um, as a quick explanation, what does Rally Movement do again? Uh, here's a showcase of it. Uh, this is a defeat boss chapter. We can't reach him. All right, so here, have a rally move, plus one move, have your Frederick pair up, plus one move, 10 move, bye. And that's the map. That's the map. And guess what we get now? We get this really horrible skill named Gale Force for Lucina, because like, it's just horrible to give it to her. You don't want Gale Force and children in the speedrun, because that's a terrible idea. You just want to use Robin and Robin only. Yeah, she's a rally bot. She, she's a rally bot. She's not meant to be a combat unit in this speedrun. All right. Well, there's like an Anna every playthrough. Why are you, why oh do you have a Hamern staff? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, the Anna Swarm, the Anna Army is coming. They're coming after me with their donations. <laughs> uh, I can't wait for someone to donate under the name of Anna. All they right. just want Tingle to thrive. They just want Tingle to thrive, yep. Uh, you, I want that elixir. Oops, did not mean to throw that out. So Robin's running out of weapons. We kind of need more weapons, thank you. Uh, that's everything, yeah, okay. So, we just got Gale Force. What does it do? Uh, well, once per turn, you kill something. And you move again. Congratulations! So this is a really big route map, so Gale Force isn't quite as useful in this map because we're trying to kill everything, and Gale Force isn't as useful, but it's still useful for like picking off a unit that's really out of the way, and then move through so Robin can be in range of as many units as possible. So as a quick strategic example coming up here, uh, we want to have Robin end on this tile, these two nerds can't reach this tile, so we're going to abuse Gale Force to paraphrase them. But goodbye. And now everything up here will die, including this mage who has two range. And, and now that a lot of those enemies are out of the way, Shersh can get her other kills. Yep. She's going to kill these two armor knights who are really out of the way. That costs like a lot of time for Robin to get. So Shersh is third and fourth kills in a run. Congratulations. Oh, oh my god. Wow. gaming. <laughs> Can you, like, get those levels in my playthrough? Like, every time I try to use her, I'm just like, why don't you work? Why can't you give me more speed? <laughs> and then she gets benched. Hooray! I mean, same for me. <laughs> I guess it's the same as Cordelia. I'm like, I, I get Cordelia, Cordelia oh levels. My oh, my God. And then, like, she just refuses to get speed, and she just never doubles anything in my lunatic playthroughs. I'm like, why don't you work, Cordelia? Why? <laughs> For me, that's Sumia never getting strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sumia has pretty bad strength issues, but in her case, at least it's easy to fix strength with forges. Hard, much harder to fix doubling, unfortunately. Oh yeah, so this is a magic tile that's just in range of all these units, and they're all dead. Well, after these pop-up boxes. Okay, cool. So that is the last route map for quite a while, and we are about to go through seven defeat boss chapters, which is very lovely, and this is where you'll see a lot of the fun from Gale Force. Um, so... How was your experience with military? Oh, the first time. That was, uh, it was a bit of a grind. Like, actually getting to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like to say, before my Lunatic Plus playthrough, I made a really stupid mistake. Uh, I have never lost any in a simulatory ever, until my Lunatic Plus playthrough. Because um, there, there, there aren't going to be any, like, really huge reinforcements from the side with Pegasus Knights, right? Right, yeah. There, there aren't going to be any. Like, you just have to clear the map in, like, four turns and you're good, right? Yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. Four, four turns. Four, I, I, think, I think the first... Spawn is four turns. Is, I know anything. I know it's like four, five, six, or three, four, four five. Four sounds right. Four sounds about right. Oh, well, yeah. There are no spawns whatsoever. Just beat the boss, Lamau. See ya. Gale Force moment. All right. So this next bo chapter coming up is the defeat boss chapter, but she's actually shocking and scary because her name is Pharos. And I like to tell my stream if I remember a generic boss's name, there's a very good speedrun related reason for it. <laughs> Like, I remember like one third of the names of the Path of Rain speed on bosses because a lot of them have like miracle and stupid stuff like that. <laughs> but uh... hello, chiming in again. We're under ten thousand away from upgrade to all stages, and we're Ooh. under fifteen thousand away from reaching one point five million audience. You ready to start counting down with me? Woo! Yeah, Let's make it happen. Cool. We can do it in the next twenty minutes. I believe in us. 
Okay, so as a quick explanation, uh, okay, I'm gonna use this and oh, I can I can magic tonic. That works. Uh, so we have some really high magic benchmarks to hit. If we are at 30, 43 magic, which we do with the, a magic tonic, we have 100 hit against the boss in this chapter. If we're at 42 magic, we can use Elfire, which has less accuracy than Elwind. If we're between 37 to 45 magic, we have to use Arc Thunder. And if you want to look at the bottom screen, Elwind has 95 hit, Elfire has 10 less hit, Arc Thunder has 35 less hit, 25 less hit. That uh, kind of sucks. But it can crit more. It can crit. <laughs> yeah, if you hit. Up for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thankfully, we kind of, are, we're, with the magic ton safety magic tonic, we're just one over. Oh, well, not two over now. Um, the benchmark to kill Pharos with a 100 hit weapon, which is really nice. So I'll go ahead and play the animations out to show how scary this is. All right, look at the stats. We, if we had two less magic, we'd do 23 times two damage, which is 46 damage. If we had L fire, we'd have 85 displayed hit, which is around 95% chance. If we use Arc Thunder, that's a 70% chance to hit, or double 82. Which, in other words, if you're using Arc Thunder, you have to gamble on landing two Hydro Pumps in a row, otherwise you run dead. There's no backup for this. But our magic is good, so we can use a 100 hit weapon. Turns out hit is a good stat. Yeah, if you miss there, it's not a game over, game over, but Frederick dies, and that just throws mm, yeah, out the Yeah, you need run. Frederick so badly, so you run just over if that happens. Yeah, Kirby had to have uh, that extra tile by having Frederick put Tingle down in that uh, further space, or else it wouldn't have worked. All right, so to start of this chapter, we'll, we'll have the magic formula for like the next four chapters as we raid, as we bonk Seiri's brother and then raid Walhart's castle. Um, so, what's the magic formula for speedrunning this game? A defeat boss chapter. Let's hear it. Yush the boss. Yush the boss. Uh, okay, we have Lucina, Rally Move, Frederick, plus one pair up, Move Robin, Olivia, Dance. 14,000 away. 14,000 away with another Gale Force. Keep going. Keep going. And Yeats. And dead. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, Tingle's level in Dark Fire is already maxed. Mm -hmm. Those stats look good enough, I think. Yeah, her stats are pretty solid. 45, I, what, she's at 45 magic? That's yeah. one off of what, cap? 40, cap is 46, so that's yeah. good. I don't need to loop her. Okay, cool. So while we're trying to get the lost level in Senate, there is still a bid war ongoing for this game as well at the very end of it. So feel free to hit, make sure you hit the lost level incentive. And also, if you want Tingle to survive or die for the world, then, well, not die, but sac be sacrificed. You can decide it with your donations, too. Would you like to know where that's at, or would you like to be surprised? I'd like to be surprised. All righty. Yeah, if you love or take Tingle, it, it's, the decision's up to you. But if you have a, few, a little bit of time for donations, feel free to go at it, because we're about to go through the magic formula of Rally, Pair Up, Gale Force. All righty, then. Here's a $5 donation from uh, Annie Chibi that says, Joining the $5 hype train, Fire Emblem Awakening was one of the first games I got from my old 2DS back in middle school and is one of my favorite 3DS games ever. Can't wait to see it broken in half. Good luck on the run, Kirby Master, and let's get all those lost levels on the schedule. Woo! Got a $5 donation here from My Hero Zero that said, Did someone say $5 donation train? Well, I choo choo choose to hop on board, too. <laughs> I've got a $5 donation here from GM Big Kev that says, watching this Fire Emblem speed run, it's like a puzzle game instead of a strategy RPG. And the only solution is use Gale Force on Man. Putting this money to all stages in lost levels. Guess what? We are under 9,000 away from upgrade to all stages, and we're under 14,000 away from 1.5 million. We're making it happen, team. Let's keep going. Woo! All right. Defeat boss chapter. He was all the way up there, but unfortunately, I don't, I don't think we're one-turning this. So we're going to two-turn instead. Uh, so this is a really scary chapter because um, we don't. We again, we are allergic to bows. These guys, they have 30 attacks, so they're going to do like 20, 10 damage normally. But this, the might stat is tripled, so they do 26 extra damage. So if they hit, that's half our health. That's 36 damage. Uh, what's the strat? Just dodge Lamau. And they have a roughly a 20% chance to hit Robin per sniper, so uh, hopefully they miss. If this is hard mode or lunatic mode, they can have hit plus 20 which kind of sucks, or um, Prescience, which is hit plus 15. Also, you can see our half our health bar is gone because we got hit by a sniper. Thankfully, we didn't get hit by a second one. Oop. And yeah, we're about to fight Walmart. I agree, Krom. Think again. 
All right. And we have rolled him back to irrelevance. 13 <laughs> away. 13 away. All right, so that's, we are approaching the last arc of the playthrough, of the run. Well, I guess this is technically a playthrough. Uh, and spoiler alert, we have another defeat boss chapter. Um, there's a chance this can go really wrong because... Um, why do you have a second Hamurn staff? Like, that's, a, that's a really rare item from Anna Shops, by the way. Yeah, that's the uh, repair staff. It repairs your weapons. Which is amazing, because given how powerful the forging system in this game is, which we'll explain later, because it's not relevant right now. Um, so this is another defeat boss chapter, and he is kind of far away. Um, I shouldn't actually remember to do that. And the scary part is that uh, this swordmaster named Sairi, uh, she's deployed to dodge t babysit Krom, because she's by far is our best unit after Robin. Uh, and this guy can attack her. We just hope she dodges. If she doesn't, Krom's dead, game over. And what, is there a backup? No, you reset. Uh, so again, these are assassins. They're scary because they have bows. And as I mentioned before, we are allergic to bows. They are very scary. All right, so we moved across half the map to reach the boss. Ah! So this is interesting because we are almost dead because we got hit by a bow. Now, we're, I'm going to go ahead and heal here, and I take a quick second to explain this, because normally this boss will go first and attack you. But if I was lower on health, the Awakening AI is actually pretty smart. They'll see a kill on these two assassins and just try to kill you. And you'll just die before the boss attacks, assuming they hit, which he probably will, because it's Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> which is why it's very important to heal there if you're weakened, because otherwise well, they're just probably going to try to shoot you down and kill you. All right, so we, this next chapter is kind of an interesting gimmick where you're supposed to fight like the 12 dead lords. Shout out to Genealogy of Holy War, fantastic game. Um, and you're supposed to kill them all. They also have like all these really legendary weapons. It, it is a defeat boss chapter, though. I forgot to make a shopping trip. And there's one boss named Aversa that we can just conveniently reach, which is kind of convenient. But first of all, uh, we need to make a quick shopping trip for more tomes, because, you know, soloing the entire game with one unit Takes, uses up a lot of weapon uses, spoiler alert. All right. All right, so yeah, you just a lot of scary enemies all over the map. We're literally just going to move. We. I'd say you have time for one quick donation. We One quick one. All right, $200 here from Dom that says, Fire Emblem, good. Also, let's Agreed. go, lost levels, all stages. Let's go. Let's go. Now, in this map... Uh, this is where a lot of plot happens. Um, long story short, it's kind of a two phase. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that. Okay, nothing happened. Cool. Okay, good. <laughs> yep, so, so we're about to fight Dad, because it's not a Fire Emblem game without a dad dying. Um, so, cause, and then, like, our dad, Valor, who's the main, one of the main antagonists, he's like, oh, I'm going to mind control you. Ha 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 ha. Um, and we'll see what happens when we fall into that trap. Okay. Yeah, so you're uh, forced to have Krom and Tingle up here. So they're going to take on Validar. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. So now he's going to try to mind control us, and then, but Robin's like, no, I foresaw your plan. I reverse Uno you back. Ha, ha, ha. And now we have to kill him for real. That's, I just summed up like five minutes cutscenes for you. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, so this... This is, this is a really big route map, though, and Robin's meticulously placed to be barely in range. Well, okay, next turn she'll be meticulously placed. For now, she's just going to kill, kill, like, two units. And... All right, so she's going to be put in this tile here, which is exactly a range of, like, you, you, everything here. Uh, Including some assassins. <laughs> yeah, and we got hit by an assassin early because we're at half health. So uh, this is scary. We are absolutely killing this guy because he has a killer, killer bow. And I'm going to have to keep two assassins alive and hopefully not die. So just dodge them out, literally. So I'll play this enemy phase out really quick. Of course we get hit by a general. There's probably like a 10% chance. Uh, that's fine. And they're all missing besides like one general. And then here, here is how scary these assassins are. 40 damage, we're at 51 HP. This is about a 18% chance to hit. We can get hit by one, but if we get hit by both, we're dead. And we got hit. You're finished. Well, you kind of need to dodge a second one. Yeah, and while it's statistically likely, it is... <laughs> oh, he's going for the, he's going oh. with the sword. 
Oh, more hit me? Oh, yes, Crom! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Saving the run with the dual guard. I think he went with a sword because a sword kills and it has more hit, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's probably why. It, it does have more hit. It's and AI does see hit rates when they like use chain weapons and stuff. All right, well, uh, this is not sketchy at all. With 11 HP. By the way, this is all in normal mode, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, we don't have elixir. Concoction. Yeah, concoction works. These, there aren't any bow users left, so like as long as we can take like one or two hits, we're fine. Baldur himself actually hits kind of hard. I mean, Dad. Good job. All right. And we just dodge, dodge tank our way to victory. And see ya. All right, so that's probably the scare, one of the scariest late game maps. Um, so there's a barely big route chapter coming up, and this is the last route chapter in the game. It's the one that I always forget exists, but it's also a good time to get in a few more donations. I agree. The game. I agree. All righty, joining that $5 donation train, we have $5 from Anna? It says, hey, Kirby, <laughs> Anna here. And Anna, and Anna, and Anna. Couldn't help but notice you blazing past our stores, even though we have such lovely staves. <laughs> Just remember, prices aren't the only things we slash. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Oh, don't worry. We'll be back in the post game. We just got to finish this run first. <laughs> yep. Already time for a few more? You can go for it until the map ends, basically. All righty. $10 here from Upset George that says, Awakening is a really special game. It's broken, but in such a way that you just want to see how much further you can take it. Great run so far, and here's hoping we can see all of the lost levels. I heard a noise in the audience there. We're under 12,000 away from reaching 1.5 million. We're still pushing there. Keep going, team. Whew. Let's go. Ah, uh, brain fart. There we go. Okay. A uh, two hundred fifty dollar donation here from totally not Link. Mm, to sus name. I know the incentive says sacrifice Robin, but I'm sure they mean sacrifice Tingle, right? <laughs> Here's two hundred fifty rupees towards saving the future from further chaos that is Tingle. Uh, I mean Grima. <laughs> Thank All you right. for that. <laughs> Kyo, not both. May you explain the forging mechanic for us? Right. So. Um, I think it's sort of in FE8 or 9. Uh, Talia's games. Yep. Talia's games. Yeah, FE9. Um, you can basically forge weapons, and this version of the game has its own um, forging mechanic, essentially. Um, so you can have up to five sort of slots, which we'll see just in a sec after Kirby's done selling stuff, um, where you can forge either hit, crit, or might. I don't have Bogonon. Oh, there's a Bogonon in the shop. But never mind. Oh, easy. <laughs> easy. Um, so you can forge hit, crit, or might, which we're going to do on uh, Bogonon, I guess. Usually it's Thor no, it is Thorn. Okay. Um, and since we have a good enough magic stat, we're actually just going to max out the crit and then uh, hit up the hit, and then Kirby's doing other things, which... Uh, Fun fact. Watch the path. This is the game doing it for me. All right, now. Now, here's a lesson for anyone who wants to speed on this game. That is slower than doing this manually. Left, left, up, left. That saves 0.2 seconds. There you go. Why? Because it does. Because. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to safety save here because Aversa, which we were actually going to kill for once, uh, is really dodgy and scary. Uh, this is the last time we're going to see the magic formula, unfortunately. So say goodbye to Gale Force. And the thing, well, we'll see the next chapter, but yeah. Gale Force? Boop. And we have 100 hit. Nice. All right. So we have one chapter left. Um, and we have a bit of time do this really quickly. Okay, so before, so normally Grima is a very scary boss and she is very tanky. So for story reasons, Grima is kind of a boss that has like a lot of bulk and it has like almost cap stats everywhere. Um, don't, don't mind this. I'm just grabbing stuff from the Renown shop for fun. I mean, this run's already not legit anyway, so who cares? Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and buy, where's Frederick? I need more money. Sell more stuff. I need 23k money, I think. Roughly. Would it really be a Kirby Master run if there weren't a meme of some sort? All right, Frederick. Have as much crit as possible. Oh, it's 23 after I buy it. Okay. Uh, goodbye, Flyface weapons. Goodbye, Basilius weapons. Goodbye, uh, Arc Fire, Arc Thunder. That, that. We don't need that. Frederick. Okay. Is this still level one, Frederick? This is level three. He got okay, a level okay. ups. Yeah but almost base Frederick. Okay. So uh, let me get some preps ready here. Pan, you, Cordelia, Maribel, mount, mount. 
Um, don't forget this. This is very important. Magic Tonic, Rescue Staff, Tingle. You want Draco Shield, Seraph Rope, Defense Luck, Speed, HP, and Magic. OK, safety save. OK, so Frederick is one of my favorite characters in the game. I'm totally not just going to dump everything into him. Uh, don't worry about him. We need Selka scale on you. There it is. OK, so let me explain this boss really quickly. Um, so Grima is ourself. She's very scary, because she is. Has 35 defense, 30 resistance, 80 HP. And if you look, I, I, you can probably see the mouse. Yep, you can. You can if you look at the IR tile up here. She's getting plus three defense and resistance, and 20 avoid on top of her 50 avoid. So she's very dodgy. She also has dragon skin, which halves all damage she takes, except from dual strikes. Um, so normally, the speed on meta is to try to go for a crit with Thoron, and that is Relatively reliable with the strats I have, honestly. But instead, we're going to try something else for a bit. Give, give Frederick a shot. I think Frederick has a pretty decent shot in killing, getting, getting the finishing blow on Grima. Do you think so? Frederick's pretty cool. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK. And one thing that helps that we have this unit named Henry who uh, has a really useful skill named H Anathema and Hex. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Basically, we're, we're, we're reducing Grima's stats by having him next to Grima. So we get plus 25 hit, plus 10 crit. So we are going to have four chances for Frederick to get a 44% dual strike. And each time he dual strikes, he will have a roughly 20% chance to crit. And I'm just doing this just so we can hear the most famous crit quote of all time. And right now, hello right now. me, meet the real me. All right. So we're going to give Frederick a shot. If this doesn't work, I'll give a different unit a shot. OK, don't get careless. Fred, no, Frederick, come on. Oh. OK, come on, crit. Oh. Oh, I'm sad. That's unfortunate. That's OK. Um, I was hoping for the famous Frederick quote, pick a god and pray <laughs> there. <laughs> But unfortunately, he didn't pull it off. He only dual struck once, which, you know, it is what it is. So that Frederick didn't work out very well. Um, well let's just finish the game. <laughs> yeah, let's just actually finish the game. Um, so we have all these extra units lying around. And we like mounts, if it wasn't obvious. Mounts are kind of good. Um, 10,000 away. 10,000 away. Yeah, and, we are. But before we hit 10,000, we do. this is the last call for the bid war of whether we want to sacrifice the future or sacrifice Robin, or rather, Tingle. Yeah, we're so gonna we're going to have to cut it off basically now. Yeah, give it like 30 seconds, and we're going to have to cut it off. So this is going to come up very soon. OK, before we do that, uh, Lucina, kind of cool. She kind of has the skill named Aether and Rally Movements. Uh, let's go ahead and just dump everything on her, because it's funny. And let's also give her an early promotion and uh, make, make the casual on me cringe at not promoting at level 20. That has a lot of strength. Wow. Hooray. Hooray. Oh, that counts. <laughs> that counts. Rob, yeah. wel welcome, Tingle's daughter. Uh, and we need Bolganon on you. And then that should be everything. OK. So let's give this a shot. The thing I do not want is I do not want Robin to crit. <laughs> Robin critting is kind of bad. So let's just please don't crit. OK. Uh, Henry into Robin. Go up there. And yeah, Henry gives uh, more magic than the other parrots in addition to having those skills. Uh, and being paired up, he, those skills still count, even if he's not in the lead. Mm -hmm. OK. OK, we didn't get blocked. That's good. Have a rally. You, oh, Flunky, go block this. Three range route rescue, let's go. Good job. All right. Now, the last thing we need to hope for is to not crit. Do not 3% crit. I'm going to okay? laugh if... Do not 3% crit. crit. Okay, well, a crit in the first round of combat is okay, but do not two crits. Do not get two crits. Do not crit on the third or fourth hit. That would be so funny. <laughs> uh, come on. 
Okay. All right. Um, we have more units here, so let's do this. All right. We do not want to crit. Okay, good, good. No crits. All right. And get ready on time. Give you plus one move. Get Henry over here, so he's next to Grima. Uh, get as many units as possible. Next to Lucina. 100 hits. I challenge my fate. Either. Oh, that's OK. <laughs> All right, so bid war is coming to a close soon. Time will be coming up after the bid war selection. So are we sacrificing Tingle? Or are we sacrificing the future? We are sacrificing Tingle. Sacrificing Tingle. OK. Wait, I have to remember this. So uh, pick no, no, right? Pick no. Yeah. OK, pick no. OK. And time. GG. Oh, goodbye, Tingle. Tingle, wait, what? What are you doing? I'm glad you and I are the same. Now I can give my life to protect those I care for. All right. Goodbye, Tingle. Say goodbye to Tingle. <laughs> All right, well, I, that's, that's about it for now. Um, I would like to give a quick shout out to um, the Fire Emblem community for just helping support this run. Um, I'd like to thank my couch commentators with me. Um, there aren't really many people who speak on Fire Emblem, so I'm glad for their time. Well, Kyo used to run it, but there, I'm glad for people's time to like, be able to contribute, take some time to commentate, and so on. Um, I have a blast running this game. Uh, we do have a Discord. You can find it on most of the Fire Emblem pages on speedrun.com. And um, there aren't many of us, but that's OK. Feel free to ask questions if you're interested in any kind of runs, and we will do our best to answer them and help out. Um, and I hope you enjoyed Awakening. I, well, Awakening um, of Tingle, who is now sacrificed, but we did defeat Grima in less than an hour. So congratulations. There it goes. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching.